Hey guys. Still working in the musculoskeletal section. Trying to get it done. How's everybody doing tonight? We're going to work on some practice exam questions. Orthodoc, I am reading, I'm actually updating and fixing the uh, CPT book so that people can uh, pass their medical certification exams for coding. Hey guys, hey Heather. Just making it a little easier to find your open and closed procedures, which is handy. And if a code is without a certain procedure, just put a line through it so that we don't associate whatever that procedure is with that code. We don't even need that written in there. So that just needs to go away. And uh, highlighting what's in the parentheses because that's usually super helpful. Knowing that you can do multiple areas in these codes is awful handy. Sometimes things are singular. So any medical coders or billers around helping out with that. Ooh, this one is a big without. So we just need to get rip, get rid of that. I mean, if it's not doing it, and why have it in there? Because this one's doing the repair. This one's without anesthesia. We can get rid of that. That way you don't pick the wrong code during your certification exam. You only have two minutes per question. You have more questions than usually. Um, I know you have more questions than even the RN NCLEX exam is, which theirs is usually around 75 questions. Coders have a 100 questions. So whatever we can do to eliminate any wrong answers is super handy. I personally am a medical auditor, so I do all HEDIS measures across the board, whether they're prescription or orthopedics. I also help do contract work with home health agencies who fail their inspection, come in there and help write policies and procedures, get their staff trained, uh, fix things that they failed on their audits, like clean and dirty areas in their cars, um, bag prep, and then write corrective actions and get them back on the certification route. Two seven O oh, two seven O oh. no two seven five six. Let's see. Two seven five six O. Oh. Yep, without anesthesia. So I put one line through the anesthesia. I usually don't put a line through the word without, but just the name of the procedure that comes after it. That way I can still see. I mean I can still see both words, but yep. That is without anesthesia. Sixty-two is with anesthesia. It is intense. We got to know the routes of the surgeries, especially in ortho. We need to know um, which side of the bone we are on, distal, proximal, you name it. We got to know everything from your op notes so that we can code. 
Uh, the exam is probably the worst part of it because Google helps us with everything else once we become a coder, but that exam is rough. It is open book exam, which is great, but sometimes these CPT code descriptors are not the best in the world, <clears throat> and we need to add a little information on them to help us out. I will have some practice exam questions coming up pretty soon. Any info we can write in on any of these procedures that describe a little bit more in detail about the procedure is always helpful too. And all that takes is a Google search. You can read plenty of medical reports about this particular surgery and what they're doing. And then write a little summary about what it is. Nothing too big. Usually five words does it. You start class, start class next week. Uh, depends on which class you're taking. <clears throat> Why did you put a line through it? Because there is no anesthesia with this code. So I want to make sure that when I'm taking my exam, I don't see on that particular example, the anesthesia is exact right underneath the word closed. So it kind of looks like closed procedure with anesthesia. But because I drew a line through it, I don't have to go all the way over here and read this. When you're doing the CPC exam, you barely have enough time to go look at each number, much less reading all of the CP code de descriptor and deciphering it out. So if my view is only a difference between closed or open procedure, one with anesthesia and one without, um, I can tell the difference really, really quick instead of having to read the entire sentence. So that's why I draw lines through anything that says without, because there's no reason to even have that there. I don't, it's just, it's just an open treatment of a knee dislocation, which includes the internal fixation. So they're screwing it all back together, usually with a plate or can do a graph, but this one doesn't include a graph or it say so. Anyway, um, this one will do a ligament repair with it. This one does not do a ligament repair. So why even write the ligament pair there? I don't know. But anyway, we need to get that out of our viewpoint. We don't need it anywhere near us. When we're looking at that code, we need to understand this is a not included and this is, is included. So super, super handy dandy, I think. It's just one of my techniques. I mean, you can take my advice or not, whatever. I'm just here to try to help. And these are, after tutoring people for over a year now, um, of getting them to pass their CPC exam, I had over 22 last month alone, which is my birthday month, which was super, super cool to see that many pass, um, that some of these techniques developed from working with them and finding out what really helps the best um, in passing the CPC exam. Um, I'll get their scores afterwards and see what areas we did low in, which areas we did high in, go back and review what we went over, what we didn't go over, what did I miss, what something that I could have told them that could have made the difference. And so these are just little tools that I use to help out. Hey, Twinkle, how's it going? So if you're taking the AAPC coding exam chunk, um, it says you start class next week. Any suggestions? I do have some. Hey, go-kart. How's it going? I missed this talk. <laughs> Let's see. Thank you for sharing the live. That is super cool, Lore. That was really nice of you. Um, cold in the operating rooms. It is. It's freezing in those places. That's good, though. You start medical terminology and the functions of the human body. I was talking to a, a medical terminology instructor today at one of the colleges. Really nice lady. So that's really cool. Medical terminology. 
Um, so what I would recommend is if you start out with ortho, let's say, the beginning of the CPT book has all these lovely bones, and then they also go through and show you your hands, your feet, and your muscles. So if you have a medical terminology um, term that means rotator cuff, heck, go put that somewhere. If you see one that, um, a medical terminology that lists out the different types of bones, like flat bones, short bones, long bones, and list them out for you, go add this to the front of the book. What are smooth uh, muscles, striated, cardiac muscles? What's the differences? Write those things in these white spaces that are available. Anything that you learn that you don't want to write or retain as memorization, but would love to turn to in your book, just in case it's in there, like your sesamoid bone is definitely on your exam. Where is that located? Do you have that written down here somewhere? Um, those kinds of things can help you out. So just organize them in the CPT book by which section they are in. Put all your cardiac uh, prefixes and suffixes there. Put all your male and female organs all that kind of stuff. Just separate them out. Put them in the front pages before every section. That way you've got it and you can refer to it during your exam. That's what I recommend starting out doing. The other thing is um, don't worry too much about all your lectures and the remedial videotapes as much as your practice exam questions. That's where the heart of your exam or your course will help you is practicing the questions, um, especially multiple choice questions. And when you're doing them, just because you get the answer right, don't finish there. Go look up the wrong answers. Look and see why that CPT code descriptor is wrong compared to the one that is right. See if you note any differences. A lot of times they really like to pick on CPT code descriptors that um, start out with the same um, words like reconstruction. And then I had another one down here. I think I had a two reconstructions maybe. I might not be able to find it. No, I had a resection instead of a reconstruction. Let's see. We've got two repairs. No. Bad page. Let's see. When they have excision, excision, tumor, tumor, soft tissue, soft tissue, they're all the same words, but they're two different sets of CPT codes. Why is that? They're starting out with all the same words. They're both upper arm. They're both elbow. What's our difference? One of them is subcutaneous and one of them is subfacial. Then the next set will probably end up being um, cancerous or muscular skeletal. So just writing that sub Q here and then sub F here will make a big difference in picking out the right answers. And that's super helpful. And when you go through those practice exam questions, each chapter review question, you can add some little scenarios down here. Like we had a diagnosis of this kind of uh, urethra um, stricter. Um, the procedure we did was this and this, and how we coded it was going to be this 52281. That kind of stuff can help you out when you do find out the right answer. Super helpful, stuff like that. You take your test on 6-4, you got a month away, month away, Heather, best of luck. I had so many pass this month, it was really great. It was so fun to see so many pass. Hey, Jill, how's it going? Hey, hockey chick, how often do you do these lives? I do them three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, two hours long, live Q&As, and then I post the repeats on YouTube. There's tons of links in my bio here on TikTok. I even have a free study group that I manage um, which is on Discord, believe it or not. You download the Discord app, and when you get there, you can click on my link, 
in the link tree and you can get into our main chat discussion here. But then I have rooms separated out with just practice questions that we practice. I also have what to expect on exam day, E&M resources, CPT, HIPPIX, you name it. I even do other certificates for other um, entities. And then we also have um, anatomy, med terms, a list of who all we've helped in the past, job resources, continuing education, all kinds of stuff, um, even an off-topic room for us to just chit-chat. Just lots of resources. It's all free. And if you go into, like, let's see, we were talking about anatomy all day today. We'll have tons of information here about practice questions, what you could add to your book. This weekend, I was putting in some of those. I like to associate, learn. So like, can tall ladies sit comfortably? Well, that helps you figure out what the areas in your spine are, right? Cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral. Really kind of cool. You can write those in your book. Um, I had quite a few of those. Uh, old people from Texas eat spiders. That'll help you out with all your cranial bones. So kind of fun, fun. I also have, you know, copies of my notes, prefixes, suffixes, and things that you might want to add to your books. But Discord is where it's at. If you're not there, that's super handy dandy and um, all free. So really nice resource right there. Hey, Bells. I hope you're doing well, too. But I do do these lives three days a week. Um, I'll be on vacation the very last week in May with the boys. I do have three sons. Uh a job <laughs> and a mom that um, I I am responsible for. So um, um, that's their week that they're out of school. Plus my baby will be turning 13. So his birthday is on May 20th. And um, we just rent an Airbnb that has a swimming pool. And then he can bring some friends over and they just stay for a couple of days and, and swim. And I grill, so. That's what we'll be doing. So that week we won't have any live lessons. I also do workshops one or two times a month, sometimes on Sundays. Those are three hours long, but there's no visiting then. I don't chat. It's just question to question to question that I do um, back to back on whatever subject we're doing those days. Your exam is on. Oh, thank you for the calendar. That is so cool, Ash. Well, I don't know what that is, but that is so cool. Thank you. I'm trying to get up to like 10,000 followers because I've been on TikTok doing this two hours of teaching. What is this? Um, for a year now, for a whole year and I was looking the other day, there's my uh, profile and that link tree has tons of stuff in there too. Um, for all the pages, like I have my own website, I'll get there. Instagrams, uh, notes are available, YouTubes, discord, it's all there. Nothing's nefarious. You can click on the links. Um, but I've been on TikTok for a year teaching two hours, three times a week. And I was looking at this Today, I figured out where the heck it was because I didn't even know where it was. Hold on. Yeah, I got to go here and then I got to go to settings and I got to go to balance. There it is. Look, for a year, I got $26 in the account. Isn't that cool? For 5,000 diamonds. <laughs> but if I get, because I think I get 10% now because I don't have. 10,000 followers. Once I get to 10,000 followers, I can, um, I can get, um, the 40% of whatever those gifts are. So that is super cool. What I'm going to use this money for is to give people free notes from my sections, um, as a prize. And speaking of that, I do have a drawing tonight of free I was just saying, yeah, this tells you that I've never drawn any money out of it. So that's cool. You can change it. I was playing around with it by whatever day. Oh, that is so cool. James's birthday, my baby's birthday. 
you can change the to the month. I wish you could do like a whole year and then hit done. And it still says I haven't drawn anything out. But anyway, it was it was cool. But I get the a more of a percentage once I get to 10,000 and I'm super close. Let's see how many did I have? And we'll just give that money away. Yeah, I got like 500 more to go. So super cool. Um, I got a drawing. Let's do a drawing for some free notes. Let me get Travis out real quick. He's doing some cartoon watching. Travis, come do a drawing for me. So what happens is I have one document on my Etsy store that the other people that are in this group of, of students help me create. If you've taken this CPC exam in the last, um, you know, 45 days or whatever, and you remember a certain CPT code or a, vo a vocabulary word that was on it, and you tell me, I'll add it to this doc doc document, and then the sale of that document goes to having free notes from my um, stash of notes. So I've got people's names in here who entered in the drawing. If you want to enter into the drawing, what I oops, heard, oops, oops. All you got to do is email me. The email is right there. Just put it in. There's the email address. Put in the subject line, um, raffle, and then I'll put your name in there. That helps me out because I get a lot of emails during the day. But anyway, come here, Mr. Travis. There's my sunshine. Oh, <laughs> How's it going? All right, put your hand in there. Don't look. And please draw. Draw somebody's name out, and they get a free section of notes from whoever it is. Who have you got? Shay B B Y X O. Shell Shay. Oh, Shelly or Shay Shay. Who is this? Who is this? This is a TikTok name. Shay B B Y X O. <laughs> you want a free section of my notes? Thank you, baby. Be sure and shut the door. So all you got to do is let me know which ones you want, like E and M. Um, Cardio. The only ones I haven't finished yet are for 2022 are musculoskeletal, lab and path, and medicine. Much to everybody's disappointment, but I'll work. I'm working on those. Uh, but all the other sections are done, so I'll DM her and or he or she whoever, and let them know that they won. So the sale of those that document that I have. Um, which I have updated. I just got to send it out. Um, helps out everybody so that they can get free copies of my notes. Um, and if you purchase that one, it's like 20 bucks. But if you do purchase it um, and I get new information, there it is right there. If you do get, if I do get new information, like I do have March and April's updated. I just got to send it. Um I got one more thing to add. Somebody else sent me an email yesterday to add some more information because they took their exam this weekend. Anyway, you keep getting the new updates. I'll email it every time I update it. You only need the one-time purchase, and then I'll send it out. But the proceeds to that, since I don't create that document, it's just shared from you guys. Info um, goes to free notes of the stuff that I do create which is like, you know, neurology notes, page by page and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, let me check on messages. Do I cover Medicare denial codes by chance? I can. Um, denial codes are usually not on the CPC exam, but I cover COC, CCS, CCA, pretty much anything. I can go over anything that you need. Is there a particular exam you're trying to pass or is this just for you professionally if you need it professionally some help um, in your career um, and want my help the best thing to do is email me your query and and then I'll see if I can't help you through the email um, if it's something like you're working on a job denial claim and you can't figure out why it keeps getting denied I can work with you um, through the email and um, help you for sure. But um, 
what my main purpose here is to help people actually pass their certification exam, whichever entity they go through, AAPC, AHIMA, whoever, and that way they can get into the medical field and start working just like you do. Hey, Hillary, good to see you. How can I watch when there are new codes to add? How can I watch when? That's okay. You can re-watch my YouTube videos at any time. Also, I have a document here on Etsy. Um, I have two of them, one for ICD-10, but really don't need that as much as you would the one for the CPT. This one for CPT, it tells you what codes you need to add to your 2021 book on what page. So like e &M has five codes you need to add to that section. If you have a 2021 book and you want to keep it because it's full of notes, but you want to try taking your test again, but you don't want to buy a 2022 book and move all those darn notes to the 2022 book. I have this document on Etsy that you can purchase and you can, it tells you what page number to go to in your 2021 book and what code to write down and your descriptor so that you can just go to those pages, write the new codes down, and then turn your 2021 book into a 2022 book. Some years I wouldn't recommend it. Like from 2020 to 2021, there was so many updates. There was over 350 updates and e &M was completely redone. I wouldn't recommend doing that that year, but this year wasn't too bad. So I do have that up there on Etsy. You can also use a um, coupon um, if you get two items, at least you can use coupon, uh, God, I can't write, okay, 30%, it's all one word, gin at checkout and that'll take 30% off. You just have to buy two items at least though. That'll help. But got tons of items up there, whatever you might need. Um, male and female is what we did on the last workshop. That was super handy. But that's the only thing I sell is like, if you want page by page of everything I've done in the books, um, then you can go there. But I do have a website, most of y'all know. If we go to my website, which is medicalcodingbygen.com, and you go to, just sign up, it's free. If I could get it to work, I don't know if I can get it to work. Oh yeah, I gotta log on, that's right. Log on, sign me in. In. All right. All right. We'll go to members only. Now that I'm signed in, I think. Yep. Oh, come on. If I can get the site to work. Um. Where are we going? Come on. I don't know why my phone is not working. It's a brand new phone. It could be. Who knows what? I don't want to go to social media. Um, I am logged on, right? I want to go to members only, and I want to see that drop-down menu. So frustrating. When technology does not work. Get it on my computer. On my website, I have a free page that is called CPT Book Prep. Yes, yes, I'm already signed in. Just go, 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 go. Um, yep, CPT book prep. It's got every picture and everything that I do to my notes and how I do it. All you got to do is just click on the picture. It'll give you a description of what I'm doing and why I do it. But it shows you exactly how to make your notes, just like mine, all on your own without having to purchase them all you know, you can, you can create your own. I also tell you how to make your anatomy look like mine. And then I have some one coder guideline sheets. Like there's four different guidelines that go with sepsis 
And some of them you code with one diagnosis code, some of them you code with two, and some of them you code with three. I have all those examples there for you too. And that's all on that page that says CPT Codebook Prep. Just scroll down, it's all free. So happy to not have y'all have to buy anything. Y'all can just go here and go to Book Prep. Plus Discord, Lord help. Discord's got probably all the same pictures there on it in all of our rooms separated by the rooms, whichever one you want to go to. CPT book prep. We probably got tons of stuff there. Who knows? I try to keep up. There's a lot, a lot going on. Look at all that info. Super handy dandy. We even have screenshots, whatever you need. It's all there. Yep, 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 yep. Two, so I hope that's helpful. Got to get to some practice questions here in just a minute. Twinkle's going to be yelling at me soon about time. Discord is an app from your Play Store or Apple Store. Most um, guys are on it for like gamer stuff or your kids are on it for games like Fortnite and stuff. So they'll probably laugh at you for getting on it, but that's okay. Can I show... The example again, sorry, go-kart, let me know which one you're talking about, or did I do it? Because you're starting to say awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Ash, for all the gifts. That was a lot. Thank you so much. Hey, Heather. No, you're amazing. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope I can help. Bells, you just became the top viewer, it says. She must have gifted something. <laughs> Thanks, go-kart. Hey, changing, chasing, Dawn, you can be involved, sure can. Hey, Betty, we're rocking Betty in the house tonight. We've missed her so much. Hi, Duncan, thanks for the roses. Congratulations to the winner. Thanks, go cart. Hey, Bells. Hey, Betty, 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 we've missed her. So glad to have her back. So how do you get to Etsy? I guess you just go to Etsy or Google Medical Coding by Jen. Um, I'm sure I pop up everywhere. Medical. Oh, and there's a link here in Etsy or in TikTok too. So you click on my picture and it'll go, it'll bring me up too. Um, so like, yeah, we're okay. in TikTok and we go to you click on that little circle thing with my picture right there and you go to the linky tree right there and I'm sure Etsy's on there too. Copies of my medical notes right there. They're right there. You just click on that and it'll take you straight there. Also, if you go to my website, Medical Coding by Jen, there's a social media link. It'll be there too, but that's where all the notes are at. I even have the notes for 2021 books still up, but I highly recommend, um, even if you have the 2021 book, go on and get the 2022 notes for that system. It's okay. It'll have the new codes in there that you can add into your 2021 book. That'll defeat two birds with one set of notes because you'll have the new codes, codes and then you can add them in to your 2021 book with my notes along with those codes. And then you don't have to get that extra document that says what codes to write where. Just get the section notes. But anyway, just Google Medical Coding by Jen. I'm sure you'll find tons of little things for me. Hey, Sad, how's it going? I need all the CPT notes and previous questions. Can I give away... Can I give away a 70% off coupon? Hey, Sad. Um, we'll, we'll talk. We're still talking on um, email today, aren't we? We were talking about that, too. I entered you in the drawing, and then I gave you um, the workshops. So I was hoping that helped. And then... If you've already got the 2021 notes, but you want to upgrade them to the 2022 notes and you don't want to pay the full fee because you already bought them 
from last year, then yes, I give out a 70% coupon. I just have to make them individually for you. So just message me on Etsy if you need that coupon. That'll help me keep straight. Hey, Twinkle. <laughs> D. Trisha. Oh, gosh. I'm caught up with messages now. Thank you so much. I got, man, I got 60 of something that was on a wish list today. That was crazy. Hey, Coral. I know I'm finally caught up. <laughs> you finally caught alive. So good to see you. It's been a little while, hasn't it? Where's Coupon Cutie? I haven't seen her in a while. I wonder if she's around. Hey, PJ. So to enter in the drawing, all you got to do is um, just go to that profile link right there. Email me. It's right there. All you got to do is click on the red email. It'll automatically send you to the email. Just write in the subject line, drawing, and then I'll put your name in, in our drawing thing and, and add you in. Watching from the Philippines. How's it going? Sometimes you guys can't put notes in your books. It's very unfortunate. I wish they had the same rules for in the United States as they had as you guys. Like your testing facilities make some weird, crazy rule where they won't even let you bring your own books. They have their own CPT books and they want you to test from them, which is so strange because even if you booked online, even living in the Philippines, if you booked online to take your exam online from AAPC, you could have your own books at home and do your exam from home with your own books, with your notes. But if you go through some third party vendor and you're out of the country of the United States, for some reason, those out of the country third party vendors have some crazy rule about they will only let you test with their CPT books, which is not an AAPC rule, which should not be enforced. Um, I've talked to AAPC about it. Um, I've been a guest educator for them and they don't have that rule and they're not sure how to get this stopped. But anyway, I wish I could help out more right there. Hey, Mercy, she's watching from Puerto Rico. Nice. How's it going? All right, let me bring up some practice questions. I got some really cool E&M ones for tonight and some anatomy ones we'll go over. Yep, 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 yep. And let me put this book out of the way. And again, Shay, if she is on or he, she... You won a section of free notes. Hey, night pie. Kitty cats are circling. All right, let me get this lappy top down. Pull this up. Move my book out of the way. And I'll show you if I was taking a medical coding certification exam today, how I would attack each question. First thing I would do is not read the questions because they're full of propaganda, stuff that is meant to confuse you. And a lot of times you can pick out the answer from the codes because what they're testing you on is the, do you know how to use the CPT book? to find the correct procedure to bill for something. And many of the codes that they pick have exclusions or things in them that make it to where you can't use it in any scenario that they've picked out. So a lot of times your answers are just in the answers. We don't go to the questions. What I recommend you doing is bringing an, a blank index card or something that you can fold into a square like I have here. Just cover up that exam question. Don't even look at it. Just avoid it altogether and only look at your answers. Let me check up with this. What have we got going on? Puerto Rico, Pennsylvania. That's so cool. 
Nice, 4 a.m. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sad loves the tips. She does. Yeah, um, the, the drawing is for free sections of my um, CPT book notes of things like this. Oh, my, my camera doesn't like to focus on pieces of paper and then um, computer screens. But stuff like this, I go through each CPT code, make notes, and do up the anatomy so that all you'd have to do is copy them down. But I like to teach y'all how to do your own so you don't have to spend money on my stuff. But they're there if you need them. If you're in a time crunch and fixing to need to go take your exam and you don't have enough prep time, they're there if you need them. Puerto Rico, that's awesome. Thank you, Twinkle. Your exam is in 10 days. Mocha Mel, maybe? <laughs> good luck. Best of luck. So these questions will be really good for you because there's some E&Ms. And E&M is going to be your biggest section for this exam. There could be six regular E&M questions, and then all 10 of your cases at the very end of the exam could also all be related to E&M. So you could end up having 16 questions out of 100 being E&M. That's where y'all should be spending more of your time. Anesthesia has just four questions. So that's one of your smallest sections that they'll quiz you on um, versus the other sections that all have six questions. So prioritizing which one sections that you focus on, you can't possibly learn everything in every section before you take the exam. So you need to compartmentalize, however you want to say that, um, ration, use some rationale. Like most of my exam is going to be EM, so I really need to learn that. And then anesthesia is okay. I need to learn the, some basic rules, but I need to work on cardiovascular, intigmatary, muscular skeletal. Those all have more questions in it. Yep, yep, yep. So these questions are going to be super cool. Yes, and don't get emotional about the questions. Oh my gosh. Yes, if you do have to read one, don't go, well, that ain't possible. What the heck do you mean? You can't get emotional. You have to do the steps. I have these steps that we have to do. In e and M, I I really don't do the process of elimination. My other sections... I do love to do process of elimination, and it works really well. It probably works really well here, too. I could probably tell that it's going to be a difference between the 36 and the 37, just because those are super close and together and not very far apart, where these two are outliers. AAPC does have a history. Because I'm an auditor, I notice everything um, that is different. I noticed that they usually give you two answers that are super um, close together and then two answers that are far apart. There's usually a reason why they pick those two answers. And then the other two are just garbage. But in E&M, it's so important that we get this right. And E&M is another bear. It has its own set of rules, which are different from the procedures. You've got a lot of stuff to consider. I go on and hold on. My children are interrupting. Uh, it was close. So then what? Because it's probably because of COVID or whatever. It's not close because of COVID. That's ridiculous. Maybe was, they're just closed, closed on Mondays. I have no idea. Maybe they because they're open on Saturdays. I bet they are. They are only open five days a week. Eh. You still got your glasses though? No. Why well, have them? But. You're going to have to, maybe that's why, because they're open on Saturdays, so they're closed on Sunday, Mondays. Ooh, what do I got money for? James, owes me money? You wanted a controller. Oh, so I bought a controller. Okay. Yeah, he used Aunt, Aunt Debbie's money, or Aunt Candy's money. Um, James, you have old glasses from uh, last year you can wear. Okay. Here, I've got your green ones. 
Those parts were not taken ones. Well, these are the only ones that I got. Right? Right? What about the other ones? The, what the, other ones? The other green ones. I don't know. And the, the scriptures. The, that's all I got in my arsenal right now, this particular second while I'm teaching, my love. Oh my gosh. Sorry. We're having a catastrophe. His glasses broke today at school. He's got new ones. I mean, these new glasses that broke today are only from January, but here it is, May. They've already been broken. We went in and bought another pair on his warranty, and they're in. I just didn't get down there to pick them up, and they tried to go today to pick them up, and they can't because the place is closed. So, anyway, we'll go get that tomorrow. So, sorry I had to interrupt. Anyway, he's blind as a bat and can't hear either. Bless his little heart. So, he has to have glasses. <laughs> it's like he can't, he can't see his hand in front of him. Or the train coming from 500 feet away. <laughs> so he's near and far. Bless his heart. Hold on. Let me get Travis to be quiet for just a second. Travis, you're too loud, honey. Mom, look at James. You're too loud. He's on the side. He's going to walk back to school. Shh. Whatever. Shh. Where's the little ear piece? Do you have it somewhere? Some of your glasses. Oh. Okay. Do you have a screw that goes with it? Okay. You. That's inappropriate to say to me, Travis. Improper language, please. Shh. Get off the couch. Turn around. Be nice. Go fold those towels. Jane. James did all the garbage taking down and the cat boxes, so you get to fold the towels, please, sir. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Sorry. Again, I apologize. Life goes on with in my crazy house, even though I'm trying to trying to help you guys. Okay, so I don't do process of elimination with ENM. I go look up and see what each one of these codes are. I wouldn't leave it up to chance. What is 99381 when it comes to e and M? I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> he see is. He's too, too young to be that blind. He really is. How do you study for your exam? Big question, Bree. Big question, big question. What is our 99318? nursing home evaluation so even if you're taking your exam in person they give you this open this booklet with all your questions in it you can write on that booklet so please write on it um, also if you're taking it at home you have a dry erase board and a marker that you can have with you so please just have down a b c or d written already on that dry erase board as soon as you log on to your exam Go on and have that written down. That way you can just fill it in with the last digits. You don't have to write the 993. It's already on all of the answers. Just write the last digits like 18 equals and then write down one word difference, whatever it means to you, something that you'll know what your one word difference is between all these codes. So y'all are saying nursing home. Is it anything in particular? Are we under new or subsequent? This is an other. Other nursing services. It says other. So I'm going to write other. But you can write on anything. Our 99327 is under new patient. Right? Our 36 is under established patient. And so is our three seven. So it must be a difference between those two questions. But it's worth your time to not do process of elimination in E and M and just look up the all four answers. Um, it just is because you never know. Usually the answer is not an other than or non-specific code. But um, hey, Tammy, how's it going?
<laughs> I totally invested in your family. <laughs> Thanks, guys. James is the baby. He's still 12. He'll be 13 in on May 20th. His birthday's coming up so, so soon. He won't be a little kid, kid anymore. <sighs> so let's see. What have we got? We've got um, an 86-year-old new sniff patient, right? Ooh. And what are we doing with this one? It just got comp, 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 comp. Ooh. That's it, two of three on C and D, Betty says. But when we look at our exam, it does say new sniff patient. Is there? Yeah. We got a rest home visit and rest home visit. So knowing that they're new instead of established, that's why we don't assume in E&M. Because you never know. I mean, everything pointed to it being a difference. And what a great opportunity that would have been to try to confuse this between the history exam and MDM. And that's probably what they know we know. But that's why they snuck in that one little word right there, new patient. But since it's new, we only have one code that deals with a new patient, right? Yeah, don't worry about that MDM. We're not there yet. We are not there yet. We we take this one step at a time. And the very, very first thing we need to know is our headers. We ain't even there yet. We're not going to worry about MDM until we clear our headers. Once we clear our headers, if I end up having two that are underneath the same header, then we'll worry about our components. But... Be careful, anything after 99215, we don't go by MDM. No, 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 no. We go by history, exam, and MDM. Anything before or on 99215 and before, yes, we go on MDM or time, but that's it. But any of these codes, uh-uh, we got to have all three components. Don't focus on MDM. That's the last thing you're going to look up. First thing you'll look up is your histories. Then you'll do your exam, and then you'll do your um, MDM last. Yep, 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 yep. So this one is definitely B. Very good, guys. And that's all we needed from that question. We didn't need to read anything else. I wouldn't have gone any further than that one sentence, actually. You didn't need to know any of that MDM. You didn't need to know none of that. That's all you needed to do was get that first line to figure out if they're new or established or an other. That's all we were working on. Don't worry about the rest of the question yet. If it had been a difference between C and D, if, if, just fake scenario, we would have written H, we would have written E, and we would have written M. And then we would have gone through and written, written, haha, <laughs> written, I sound like my children now, um, the CPT code associated with each based off the description and MDM would have been the last one. And then we would have chosen based off our two of three or three of three. I don't know if that makes any sense since this is fake scenario, but Anyway, that's how we would handle it. And I'm sure I've got some of those examples coming up. So let's see. What have we got going on here? Number one, don't pay attention to what comes after your very first CPT code. That's why you should take two index cards. You're going to cover up the question above and not read any of it. You're also going to cover up any codes that come after the very first code, whatever it is. We don't need to know none of it. We're going to take this one step at a time. We're going to go see what's going on with these 85 codes. Where are we at? Travis! <laughs> He's so excited. <laughs> 
Poor James. I got to show y'all. I got to show y'all in just a second. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Because I'm going to go tell Travis to be quiet too, but you, you got to see this. You got to see this. Poor James. Travis, you're still a little loud. Where's your glasses? The black ones. The black ones. His Morpheus glasses? His Morpheus glasses. <laughs> Put them on. Put them on because I want to show something. Let me see. Put them on. I don't want to be on camera. <laughs> Here, I'll show you the glasses. Can I show him the glasses? This is what he he wore home today. <laughs> they have no no leg on them, so I had to get out last year's glasses. But he doesn't want to be seen. He looks cute without that little line on. Huh? That was last year. Last year, last year's. Oh, those are two years old. Oh wow, that's this year's. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right, Travi, you be a little quiet, please. 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 Huh? Huh? Have I looked for your necklace yet? I know you ain't doing that while I'm on my live, James. It's cool to show them. You're going to show them? You got to put on the glasses. No. You want to show them your whistle? Huh? We got more glasses around here somewhere. You wear my old ones. Yeah, where my, um, James, please stop. I don't have the same prescription as you. They're in a um, soft case somewhere, like this one. <laughs> you gonna whistle? You gonna get on the camera? Where is? Where's this? J Travis, be appropriate. Where is that other? Nothing in this case. No. Good gracious. Oh, did you look in these soft ones? Um, yeah, here's your blue ones from last year. You never yeah, even wore yeah. once. Oh, no. What about your blue ones? Those are at least last year's prescriptions. Little dogs. Okay. All right, I'm going to finish my live, guys. Wow. Oh, where did I put the cell phone? Please. Yeah, those look beautiful on you. Right. No, Travis. You're not even trying to be quiet, honey. <laughs> Lord help. Okay. Let's get back over here. And they gave me 20 bucks. <laughs> That's Aunt Candy's Easter money that James was given. My mama's baby sister gave James and he just spent it. So. Oh, okay. I wish he would have wore the glasses. He had them on today at school with one side completely gone. I, just, I couldn't get a picture of that. So that would have been cool. <laughs> yeah, frames can be so expensive. I buy the warranty. Insurance covers $99 of the frames. But of course, frames are like $150. And then if you get the scratch protection and then the warranty on them, that's another 50 to $70 on top. So it's still expensive even with insurance, but it's, it's a necessity. He has to have them. There's just no getting around that one. Yep. He gets migraines once in, he has to get new prescriptions every year. And even if I go like 11 months, he starts getting headaches and um, can get nauseated with it because his eyesight goes bad every year. Usually people can go two years without new prescriptions, but bless his little heart. He has to have a new one all the time. <laughs> James is your best friend's name. James Michael. And then Travis is, is James, is Travis James Michael. And then my oldest is John Michael. So my dad's name is Michael. So we got Michael and all three boys' names. <laughs> and all of them start with a J, like Jennifer, like my name, except for Travis. Travis is unique. <laughs> James and John and Travi. Yeah, poor baby. <laughs> So let's go to these 85s. I'm sorry. We're underneath our red header for emergency room visits. And it does say in our red header that these are new or established. It doesn't matter. When they're in the ER, it doesn't matter. And all of these codes are under the same header. So 
we know that they're all under the same header and they're all going to have different histories, different exams, and different MDMs. So we're going to go on. We're not going to care about all that over there. We're going to go on and write down our H. We're going to write down our E. And we're going to write down our M. These represent the three components that every code has to meet or exceed after the 99215 area. All these codes back here have to meet or exceed a level to bill it. It can go higher than that level, but you can't go lower. I don't know. You, you can't bill higher if you haven't met that thing. Anyway, so we're just going to check out our question and we're going to see, we're going to look for our key term. It doesn't matter who it is, who's being seen, what they're being seen for, could care less, doesn't matter, matter in any factor whatsoever. All that's going to matter right now is our level of visit first. So we need to find the word history and we need to look before the word history and after the word history, make sure we really got the right word. And we need to find out if it's detailed, expanded, problem focused or comprehensive. So we're just going to skim this question till we find the word history. Please don't read it. It's full of garbage. You don't need to know. So what is our history? We do. What CPT code can we associate or code with a detailed history? Sometimes there's multiple. Some of them, like 82 and 83, both have expanded problem-focused history. So it can sometimes be two codes. Detailed is with which one? That one is with 84. So what we're going to do is going to go over here to the history and we're going to write the code 84. I'm not writing the entire CPT code because it's irrelevant. The 992, the only thing that really changes is the, the four, but I at least grab the eight just because that's the way I do it. You can do it however you want to do it. Our exam was also, was what? No, it was something different. It was a comprehensive exam. How do we build comprehensive exam? It's only our 85, 85, 85. Okay. And then our MDM for this patient was moderate, moderate is 84 and 83, 83 and 84, 83, and then also an 84. Are we two of three or three of three in the ER? How many components have to match? Our 85 is is high, right? We're three of three. All right. Since we're three of three, we don't delete one of them. We're going to keep them all. And we can bill which one. What would be our answer? So our answer is going to be 84. We can't build 85 because our history did not get up to an 85 level. Neither did our MDM. Even though our exam went over it, it's okay. We can meet and we can exceed a level, but we can't not meet it. So 84 is good, which process of elimination would have worked probably just fine and gotten us here anyway, because you know I would have loved to have just gotten rid of 84 and 85 and 
just kept those two because they're the same answer. The only thing they're really asking us with this question is, do we know the difference? Can we bill one diagnosis code or do we need to bill one diagnosis code with symptoms for this patient? That's the real question behind this one. But I believe it's worth the time during your exam to do this, even if the process of elimination is pointing you to this. Because just like in our other example, we thought we were going to be at 36 and 37. If we hadn't have done our first step is to check out the headers first, those red headers, to make sure we're under the right header, we would have gotten this one wrong. So it's worth it. Just do it each time. Make sure that you're under the right one. And then go figure out what's next. MK is loving answer D. Our guideline states that if we have a diagnosis, we don't need to include coding for the symptoms. If we do not have a diagnosis, then we need to code the symptoms. Our section of the CPT book is symptoms. If you look at the sidebar, because it's color coded, the, 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 the sections of your ICD-10 and your CPT book are all color coded with the sidebar color. And they all have header descriptions where like C codes, we know those are all neoplasms. They're all cancer codes. We know that um, external causes are chapter 20 and 19, and those start in the S's. And go to T and go to Y's and W's. They're all back there, including the Z's. We know that our codes are all signs and symptoms, but a quick check of at least what the sidebar says would get you that information. Yep. Yep. We're going to be at D. Very good, guys. All right. So this question is just asking us, would we code this patient? Oops, sorry. Discord. Would we code this patient a new patient, an established patient, an office patient, consult, or an observation? And remember, we don't care where their physical location is at. We care what the physician says their status is, which could be an observation, because you could be in the ER for three days, but still be admitted to the hospital and be inpatient. So don't forget that one guideline. But one simple one is to know whether a patient is new, established, an office consult, or an observation. So we'll just check out this question real quick and see that this first sentence is going to tell you all that you need to know to be able to code this one. MK says it's going to be a new patient. How would this second opinion MD be able to bill is their question. They're going to go get a second opinion on whatever's going on. Is that doctor going to code a consultation, an established visit, a new patient, or an observation care? We have a guideline that states that the patient, the next door neighbor, whoever, even the insurance companies can require a second opinion, but no one will get an office consultation off of that. No one will. The only way you could get an office consultation code, even in patient hospital consultation, is if one MD can't take care of that patient and asks for another physician in a specific specialty to come see that patient and take care of them for that issue. It has to be that one 
doctor that sends that patient for the consult. It cannot be Aunt Sally Sue goes to this doctor and that's the best one for the arm. The patient can't even direct his own care to another physician and get that doctor an office consultation. Nope, not ever going to be allowed. What that doctor can do is see that patient and he can do a second opinion, but he can only bill a new patient level visit for that patient. Correct. A is the answer. So just be careful when you're doing this. Find out who wants the consult. Who wants to go see another physician? If the old man wants to go see another patient, if it's his wife, his children, whoever it is, they don't get, that doctor does not get a consultation. The only way is if a doctor is seeing a patient and thinks, oh man, I need to bring in another doctor in here because I can't handle this. I need another opinion. That's how you get the consult. And the only way you get a consult, even if the insurance company requires a second opinion, they cannot get an office consultation. They have to do the new patient. That one bit of knowledge will have you passing e &M section for this particular category, and they'll probably ask you a couple of times about this scenario in different ways. So as long as you stick to your guns, you verify from the question that it's not an MD to an MD. Because if you look at the bottom of this question, or yeah, it'll say, Dr. So-and-so, let's see, let's see, let's see. So the neighbor referred him to that one. Sometimes it'll say that the doctor will go in and put in the referral for the second opinion, but it's only based off what the, uh, the patient wants or the neighbor wants. That still does not constitute a consultation code. It will still end up being a new patient visit, so be careful. It might even say in here his primary care physician will go on and put in the referral, but that doesn't mean that he gets that consultation code. So just verify Stick to your guns. Unless it says something about the provider really needs a second opinion, then no consultation codes. No one's ever a consultation. Just like no one's ever in the ER. On rare occasions, both do happen. But mostly during the exam, everybody's a new patient or uh, for these scenarios or no one's in OR. They're all observation or impatient, just in general terms. Okay. I feel like I'm rattling on forever today. Um, how much time do I have left, Twinkle? If an established patient's taking another doctor's opinion, then is it a consult? If established patient taking another doctor's opinion. Nope. Oh my gosh, Twinkle. No. If, if an established patient takes another doctor's opinion, it depends on how he got to that other doctor for the other opinion. Unless that primary care physician says, I agree with the patient. This patient should go see this other doctor for another opinion. Then, nope. Yeah, you have to have a doctor sending them. Yeah, if a primary care physician can send them, absolutely. But it has to be the doctor's idea, not the patient's idea. Not the neighbor's idea, not the wife's idea. It has to be the doctor's idea. You know, this chest coat has been lingering on for too long. I've treated it with antibiotics. Um, we've done physical therapy for breathing, whatever we've done. 
I can't get this cough to go away. They're not on any blood pressure medicines that cause cough. I don't know why they're still coughing. Maybe they need a second opinion. Maybe they need to go see a lung specialist. Let me put in that referral. That gets a consult code. So you have to have it be the primary care physician's idea. Does that make sense? Can't be one of those scenarios where you sweet talk your doctor into a referral to go see somebody. If you sweet talk your doctor into it because your neighbor said so, then it's just going to be a new patient. I hope that helps. All right. What are these 99466 codes? And whatever they are, my strategy is to go to them. I'm not going to find my rules and regulations on how to use this code with or without other codes unless I go to that code. So right away, I'm going to go to 44, no, 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 99435 for sure. See what that is real quick on my way to 466. So what is 99485? Well, three, five, eight, five, three, five. Oh, I can't see through my camera. Oh, yeah. We're going to go to 66 first. I thought it said three, five. I'm the one that needs glasses now. <clears throat> James is rattling off on me. Oh, we've got critical care. Pete's critical care, huh? And then what's our 85. That one's two-way. So I have little, I've already went through and prepped E&M. So I'm cheating a little bit and knowing my one word differences. But if you haven't yet, go through each one of these codes and make sure you know the differences between 66, 67, and 85, and 86. So Your differences are 66 is hands-on during a transport of a patient. And then 85 is two-way radio. We're on walkie-talkies talking to the ER team or ambulance team um, helping transport a patient. So I have those written down underneath my CPT codes. Good Lord, roofing. Good Lord. I'm like, is she, what is she, is she talking about, Molly? <laughs> what <is> she, <laughs> if it wasn't Betty, I wouldn't be making fun. That's so sweet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Riding with the patient. Yeah. I'm sure some of those EMTs would like putting that doctor up on the roof of the ambulance and riding with them up there because that would probably be more fun be surfing you remember doing that in high school surfing on your cars I don't know it was something we did in the 70s and 80s all right so all we have to find out is the doctor in the ambulance or is he still at the ER talking to the ambulance that's all we got to find out don't read the question that'll first get us to at least eliminating the first part of this scenario you got to take it one step at a time so you don't go in reverse or have to look at your book nine thousand times now that i've written this part down that's the easiest part so let's go see what's what's where's our doc is he in the ambulance Ooh, by helicopter usually they don't put doctors in the helicopters it'd be very unusual Did they? Ooh, face-to-face critical care time services, 30 minutes during transport. Mm, Very cool. In real life, we don't have room for doc. We have a specially trained paramedic that can do everything in in the ambulance. Plus, he has all the flight stuff. So anyway, they're in a helicopter. Very cool. So, yep, we are going to do our 66. So, 
I know because I glanced as I was covering up this question, 66 is written down three times. And then there are two additional different codes that go along with the other options. I need to look at my parentheticals underneath our 66 code to see if I can add another code, if I can not add any codes. There's some do nots and some do's listed there underneath those codes. And it says we are to use 67, right, with 66. So let's see if that's one of our options. We do have that listed there. Probably this 60 is, since it's nowhere underneath this one, it's probably just coding irregularity. I would get rid of that since it's not mentioned underneath the code. Our difference is just between using the add-on code with it or not. And how we would figure that up is to go by time. So we just figure up how much time we've got. 30 to 74 minutes is included in our 66. So we know our answer is A. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I was just reading the guidelines up above. Code for additional non-face-to-face -face transport time needs to be at least 15 minutes and not less to be reported. Okay. I was wondering how much time needed to be capsulated after the 74 minutes before you could start coding the 767. Face-to-face -face should not be less than 30 minutes and should not be reported. Okay. So that's cool. <laughs> Isn't that right? If he's in a helicopter, yep, he needs his own crazy modifier. That's awesome. Yes, A is our answer. Perfect. All right. So I know our 99214 is established, right? I know our 85 is ER. The rest I don't know. What's going on with 395? What's going on there? Yep. Yep. If it had been 29 minutes, they wouldn't have been able to bill any of that anyway. So they got that 32 minutes. All right. 99395. I'm glad you get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Established. Is that a wellness? Is that one of our wellness? Wellness. Wellness, all right, established, ER, whatever you want to write, ER, and then we've got a new patient. No, that's not, yeah, that's established. we got two established, that's right. Two established, all right, let's see. We do have a 20-year-old who's here for his wellness. Does he? for his yearly with his primary care physician. So that sounds like he's established. Oh, there he is, he's established. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna erase all my junk because it's confusing. And we're going to eliminate just the established and eliminate the new patient, right? We're gonna keep our established. Is that right? Do I have the right codes? I always forget which one's established, 85s or 95s, because they're always confusing. But I think that's right. These are our two established, and the difference is, would we add a new, another e &M visit along with the wellness based off the descriptions in the CPT code?
question. So when you go to have a wellness exam, number one guideline is you have no chief complaint. You are a well, happy individual with no chief complaint. No runny noses, no cough, no feeling tired or sluggish. There should be nothing other than your wellness exam for these. If something else is added, say they did a cyst removal, a wart removal, um, this patient was complaining of being tired and they ordered lab work and diagnostic because of it, then you do have to add another office visit onto that code because we'll do their well exam here, which has no chief complaint, do their risk assessment for their age. But because this patient had complaints, we do need to add another office visit onto it so we can do a full history of how long they've been feeling tired, how long they've been... Um, in their physical exam, we need to listen to their heart, make sure there's no heart murmurs, listen to their lungs, have them bend over, see if they get dizzy, have them close their eyes and hold their arms out, see if there's any equilibrium problem. And then they're also drawing blood and doing x-rays. So that's why we need two office visits. Wellness exams have no chief complaint. If there's a chief complaint, you either get rid of the wellness exam and don't do that one, or you do both. And don't forget about your modifier you need. Yeah, I'm a little, I was a little early maybe for mean, so she probably come on in soon. Uh, she was in chat last night on Discord, right? Um, I wonder, I wonder where she, oh, she's going on vacation this month, I think, guys. That's right. She was waiting until she got back from her month-long vacation and um, so she might not be around. She may be traveling today. I forgot. Look how invested we all are in each other's lives. Isn't that the neatest thing? <laughs> Got our own little community here. So she's on vacation, I believe, maybe. Hey, making your way. What's that song? Oh, my gosh. Now I got that series in my head. It just popped in. Takes everything you got. Yep. All right. Let's do this one. <laughs> Discord is awesome. All right. We've got an established patient right here with our 213. I don't know what this 99204 code is. What is that one? <laughs> me giggles or megs as I call you for some reason how's it going what is our 99024 code And just to check, check, this is who won a free section of notes today. Uh, Travis drew your name. Shelly, yep, I gave her this one. I think I still owe this person free notes because I have not heard from that one yet. So I've got two people here that have notes that I can email them. PJ, I haven't heard from, I don't believe so. And I need to send notes to them. If I don't hear, I'll draw another name, but I did get this person their notes. So they won to, so they're good. But these two people won notes, and I need to find out what notes they want sent to them, which section of my notes, and then uh, their email address so I can send it to them. She's on. Yay. PJ. Yay. Yay. 
you won like, I don't know, I think it's been like two weeks ago. And I've just been forgetting to DM you on TikTok and then forgetting to re-say it again. So I'm I'm slow. I'm sorry. But you did win on one of my last lives, I think about two weeks ago. It was the same day that Skinder won. Um, and you won a free section of any of the notes that you want from my Etsy store. Just let me know by um, emailing me. Where's my phone? <laughs> I'm always moving stuff around here on my desk. I have everything, but I'm always... So, let me get my email up for you. Oops, verification code. Yep. My son's needing that. Sorry. Sorry. Was. Good Lord, my oldest needed me an hour and a half ago, and I'm just now emailing him back or messaging him back. We're a family that does not call each other. <laughs> we just text. So we just have to figure it out when we see the messages. Okay, PJ, email me there and let me know what section of notes you want, and I will email them to you. Yeah, everybody has crazy names. They're all different on, on Discord and on Messenger and on Facebook and on TikTok. Everybody has different names. Different names. Ah, uh, MK, you're great. What is, oh, Lord, what happened to that? <laughs> I can hear Travis screaming at the TV. He's playing a racing game. Oh, Lord. Where is 99024? That is back in medicine. So if you've been looking in E&M, you probably won't find it there. I don't think. I think it's in medicine. Stay focused, Jennifer. 990. Nine nine zero two four is post operative follow up. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, miscellaneous didn't help me much, but the CPT code descriptor helped me out. That's post op. So let's see what's going on. We have an established patient, ninety day global for the knee. presents today and while there she asked to check her shoulder now what are you going to do MK can you really bill her for post-op I mean you can she's there technically for post-op of her right now knee but she brought another chief complaint yeah, so we're gonna need we're gonna need two. Are we gonna do our twenty four modifier or our seventy nine? Is what our question is technically really about. Is it an unrelated procedure service by the same physician or other healthcare professional during a post operative period, or? Do we have an unrelated evaluation and management service, which is 24, during a post-operative period? Oh, Lord. Both those CPT code dis modifiers sort of saying the same thing. What's our differences between 24 and 79? By the same physician... By the same physician. Yep, yep, yep. By the same. Mm 
One of them's an MDM service, yep, an evaluation and management service, and then the other one is a different service, like just a procedure, like a CPT code. Yep. <laughs> yep. They both have very similar descriptors. This one does E&Ms, and the other one does... I don't know if it would been dermatology and you were following up with your dermatologist, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good scenario where that would be. And then you came in with another thing that needed to be cut off. I don't know. <sighs> but we're definitely doing E&M. So, you know, you pick the one with the E&M on that scenario. I need to find one where 79, 74, 79 would be the answer. That would be cool. But it is 24 because of the wording of evaluation and management. 79 does not have the wording evaluation and management in it. That is your key term difference. 79 is just doing a procedure. It's just a service code. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Hey, Banks. How's it going? I got Cashmere, Trisha, Dawn, Valencia, Charlene. Yeah, I got y'all's entries for the drawings. We'll do another one on Wednesday night um, during our live. So I'll get y'all's names in the drawing. <laughs> it, new jobs are stressful. Yep. Yep, understandable. Stick at it. Do as much as you can. Even in nights where you can't code, Google an anatomy part. Go to any anatomy picture in your CPT book. And you can even go to the, like, in muscular skeletal, like, there's tons of pictures of particular bones or spinal positions or surgeries you can add to these anatomy pictures. And while you're super sleepy and tired and don't feel like doing any code work, you can Google segment spinal instrument um, procedure and then go to images. They might have something labeled that you don't have labeled here that you might find that's interesting and write that down on your pictures. Just coloring is what I call it. And then that way you're not working up anything. You're just copy pasting from Google um, anatomy stuff. You can look up prefixes and suffixes just for like muscular skeletal. How many bones are in the head? There's 22 skull bones in your skull. Just simple things like that. You're still being productive and helping yourself out during your CPC exam, but you're not, not doing anything. So that, that's helpful. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. The first step is to clear the exam is the most <laughs> difficult spot. I helped a lady and she looked in Google. <laughs> it's, it's, it's stressful. It is even just, um, try, trying to get logged on is stressful. Yep, yep, yep. MK, you got it. Just email me. All right. I was just checking my email because I was looking for something else really quick, and I noticed all those came in, so I just 
while y'all are here with me, I wanted to let y'all know that I gotcha. What's going on? Okay. All right. So our 99202, if I can find my mouse. Okay, new patient, right? We've got new. Ooh, I can't write today. That does not even look like new. Okay. New. I don't know why my mousey is just acting a fool today, or my fingers are. New. There we go. We got established, and we got two ERs, right? That's just handy. Let's go figure out where our patient is at, and don't be looking at ER, ER. Just ignore that. Let's see. Ankle injury. And what do they do? They send them home? Yep. So they are in the ER. We're going to go there. What's our differences between the 83 and the 84? We're going to write H. We're going to write our E. We're going to write our MDM. Our history is detailed, which goes with which CPT code? Is it 84 or 83? Both could be 83. This is that one where I was like, man, can I do this on all the CPT codes or should I? Should I not? Is that the one? Somebody asked me, can we do that on all of them? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm hoping so. No, it's not this set of codes. I have a set of codes where somewhere I scratched out right here these 99221 and 99222. Look how it says detailed or comprehensive. Well, if the question example says detailed, that doesn't automatically mean it also includes comprehensive because this one is the one that's comprehensive. So just because it's or, that doesn't mean that a detailed equals comprehensive. It, it means it's got to be comprehensive or it's got to be detailed. So I crossed out the comprehensive. I don't know if I can do that throughout the entire book or how many more examples I have that are or, but that's what I was just rambling about in my head. <clears throat> but these, these, thank goodness, do not have an and or an or. We've definitely got expanded problem focused or we have a detailed, which goes with our 84. So we're just going to write 84 right there. 84. Our exam up here there we go our exam was expanded problem focused which does go with two codes it goes with the 83 and the 82 where's my mouse I lose it every time 82 and 83 and then our MDM is what? Moderate. Okay. Moderate is 83. 84. So we got 83. And 84. Our guideline states we have to meet or exceed the component threshold to be able to bill it. Are we 3 of 3 or 2 of 3? We are 3 of 3. Yep. Yeah. Can you bill an 84 out of your exam? Heck no. We can't bill no 84 out of that. That exam, right? Our exam is expanded problem focused exam. And our exam has to be detailed, meaning you have to cover more body parts. <clears throat> Let's see, in my notes way back somewhere else are Okay, to do expanded problem focused, 
you have to review either two to five body areas or two to five organ systems in detailed to be able to do that on an exam you have to do six to seven body areas or six to seven organs systems to qualify and they're saying they only did two to five two to five body parts so or organs so we can't we can't bill that as an 84 we have to do it as an 83 or an 82 You okay, Betty? You got it? It's kind of hidden. Our detailed history and you'd think it said exam probably was that you probably thought the exam was also detailed the way they have it written. But it said it's <clears throat> expanded problem focused. <laughs> and so our 84 says detailed examination, but our 83 says expanded problem focused, and so does our 82 expanded problem focused. Yeah, they're just always word playing people. Sometimes they combine history and exam and say one word, they're both detailed. Sometimes they split them up. You never know. Yeah. So... We can definitely only bill, we have to meet or exceed. We've got 83 in this one. We got 83 in this one. Yep. So we're going to have to bill an 83. Even though our history exceeded an 83, we can still bill an 83. It's okay. We can't bill an 84 because only our MDM made it to an 84. Each one of these would have to meet or exceed an 84 to be able to build an 84. So we're going to build an 83. How much more time, guys? <clears throat> Miss Twinkle. Because I know my throat's getting raw right now. So I think it's been a couple of hours. I shouldn't take off the whole freaking weekend. Ended up not going anywhere. Didn't even take the boys to the trampoline park. <laughs> we ended up staying home for one reason or another. I'll try to take them next Saturday. Um, Fifteen minutes more. Let me see what else do I have. Okay, we're going to skip that one. Let's get some anatomy going because I had some really cool anatomy ones. Thanks to Betty, by the way, <clears throat> that I am wanting to um, share because they're cardiac ones. And I should have done them during the cardiac um, uh, workshop that I did because these are really cool because they're kind of hard. A little bit. I think they are. I don't know. I don't know what you guys will think. Anyway, Betty may know all these since she sent them to me, but I appreciate it, even though she knows she hates it when I say that. Who's oopsieing? Who's oopsies? <sighs> Which heart chamber would you expect to have the thickest walls? Right, left ventricle, or right and left atrium? Good job. We do have the left ventricle, which is B for all the 
everybody that said B. I think we only had one C. Here's your explanation. It's a long one. Betty is nothing if not thorough in her explanations of things. Always. I know she hates me saying she helped me out, but sorry, I can't help it sometimes. I was trying to say, leave it alone, ignore it. Okay. So our left ventricle is responsible for pumping all the blood to all the tissues in the body. So if you don't have that written on that cardiac page in the very beginning of your cardiac anatomy thing, that is super helpful. I think, I think I've got it in mine, but I don't think I ever went over that question, but I do have it written in my notes somewhere. Good gracious, I got so many pages of notes on this sucker. But our left ventricle, left ventricle, left ventricle, it's called the workhorse. That's about all I've noted, noted right there. I probably ought to say it has the thickest walls. It's pictured with the thickest walls too, but um, I should put that information there too. Has the thicker walls to match our exam question example that we have. <clears throat> So what I like to do is use the words that they use in their exam questions, whoever it comes from, so that I see when I see it, I can add that to my anatomy. Thickest walls is all I'm going to add right underneath it. Thickest walls. Yes, page 240. 240. Yep, I had workhorse. I just added thickest walls to it right underneath it. That way I've got it. And every time I put it back on the thing, it flakes on me. But that's all we need to know is that it has the thickest walls. All right. Placing a blood sample in a centrifuge will cause the blood to separate into three distinct sections. What is the order of the three sections from the top of the tube to the bottom? So they're talking about something that looks sort of like that. And they put all your blood into it when they draw it out of the arm. And your blood, after they put it in the centrifuge, will be a real thick congealed right here. It'll be a red color and then it'll be a clear color. What is the stuff at the bottom? What did y'all do? I'm a shy geek. <laughs> Seems like she just doesn't want to take credit, too, for being so cool. I couldn't, I love having help. Um, if y'all have got any questions y'all don't understand, want to share, want to see in the live, see my take on it, y'all share them away. I will definitely put them in the lives. A year of doing um, these questions, six hours a week, it's always fun to see new stuff, you know. Even if you don't have the answers, I'm cool with that too, because I'll go find them. So here's our options. We've got red blood cells, a puffy coat of plasma, plasma, puff, buffy coat, red blood cells, oof, plasma, red blood cells, buffy coat, good lord, Buffy coat, plasma, and red blood cells. So they're having you do them in order. They love list. So like in the cardiology, they have a series where like pulmonary is first, art, 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 oh gosh, aortic is second, 
mitro is third, and tricuspid is fourth. Same thing here with this blood thing. They love these series. So what comes, what's in the top, what's in the middle, and then what's at the end? And if you don't go write these in the front of lab and path, this small little series, you know, that's a really good way of having the information where you can find it. And I would put it on page 597 after all that pathology table. We don't need that, but that's where I would write this series. <laughs> cool question from a cool gal. All right. Yeah, anatomy's horrible, but that's okay. We only have five questions on the whole exam in anatomy, so don't fret. And normally, the first two questions, especially on the online exam, are going to be really wild out there, obscure anatomy things that you're not going to have any clue on. And that's the first two exam questions. And it's there to throw you off, make you feel unsure, and give you a panic attack for the rest of the exam. So ignore them. Do them last. Whatever. Just skip them and laugh at them and you'll go back to it later. You know, whatever. Let's see what you guys think. Yep. The correct answer is starting out with plasma first. Look at that process of elimination. Get you to those two that say plasma first because those two are the only two similar and then all you have to do is decide whether you're Buffy or if your red blood cells pack at the bottom whatever Buffy sounds like it floats to me when I when I hear that so red cells pack it's just one of those words that we commonly use with red blood cells they pack like they're going on a trip or something, they pack. Um, that just means they compact. Not really that they pack, but they become compact. So, um, and it's really spelled C-A-T. But us in the medical field are bad about shortening everything. And so we call it packed, but it sounds like pack. But anyway, red blood cells are compact. They bind together and and when you spin them and stay at the bottom so they're not going on vacation but they they do pack in like sardines so they're always the last at the bottom so i don't know the red coats are down at the bottom however you want to associate the order just know that red is at the bottom <laughs> buffy floats in the middle and plasma is the light on top. You know, you think about plasma las lasers. It's a light. So the light is on top. Buffy's in the middle. And the red coats are packed down at the bottom. I don't know. I like association. So that's how I do it. <laughs> Thank you for the hearts. 3,000 likes. That's cool. And three shares. We're in the threes today. I'm just reading everybody's notes. Top is the professional bull rider. <laughs> no way. No way. Is it professional bull rider? Oh my gosh, that does fit. That is cool professional so what she's saying is the professional that's that word bull that's that word um rider <laughs> that's right <laughs> professional bull rider did y'all see that tiktok where this guy got on a bull with grandma and was trying to help hold grandma so he's on the front of the bull on the neck holding grandma, straddling her as she's straddling the bull. It's just funny. She wanted to ride one of those electronic bulls before she went one day, and so he got on with her and tried to hold her on. It was great. 
you added it to Discord. Good job. Discord is our free group, um, study group. It's um, way better than our Facebook group, which would only hold 250 people. Plus, you have to be in the group to be able to see any pictures that were shared. You have you can't see the previous pictures that were shared. So if you've never done Discord, please download the Discord app. It looks like um, Mickey Mouse Bridges, like that, but I'm told it's a gaming controller, but it looks like Mickey Mouse's Bridges to me. Download that app, even if you've got an Apple or iPhone, you can even do it on your desktop, which I have right here on my lappy. And this is our lovely chat. We have a normal chat room, which is this big hashtag right there. And that's where everybody shares and talks and visits. <laughs> and you get notified when I go live for free too. And then I have all these side rooms that you can go into like if you just want to practice uh, CPC exam questions you go to that room and I've got tons of questions in here you can practice away with and we work on those um, usually every night what to expect on prep day um, everything from where to put my computer what books to buy how do you have your desk set up all that kind of stuff is there e and m resources cpt code anatomy all of this stuff is free i even do other certificates even if you're a hema or whatever we even have uh, job helping um, continuing education and this is a great video of where to start in discord and to know how to use it is that very first video that Betty put in. Once you download the app, sign up for your own account, click in my link and join Discord. Go to the very bottom room and watch this video. It'll show you how to use Discord, but it's all free. And this is super handy dandy place. If people message you and you need to um, talk to them, it'll be up here in your notifications. I have one new member or somebody that wants to join. It looks like pending, waiting on me to add them. Yep, one person. Um, you can have it on your phone or you can do it on your desktop. It's free. It's not tracking. It won't send you like ads or advertisements or anything. So super cool. And you can find all the links to all of that here on TikTok. Tiki Talk. I was trying not to say Tiki Talk, but I did. Um, right here in my bio, you just click on that picture of me and the boys and then click on my link tree right there and then it'll all come up link tree and then I've got the discord pinhurst instagram copy the notes the youtubes but there's the discord free app and you just click on that once you've already signed up for the free discord app and you got your account going just click on that and then hit accept invite and you'll go right in there and you can see we've got quite a few members. Almost hitting a thousand. And also, guys, if y'all could please share, I guess, the Tiki Talk. I don't know. I'm trying to get to 10,000 followers so I can make that creator thing. I don't know what it opens up, but I know instead of only getting 10% of you, your guys' gifts, I'll get 40%. Um, which I'm going to turn into free notes and do raffles for that money too. Right now, after a year, we've got $26 in there. I haven't withdrawn it yet. i got to figure out how to do that. But um, that's for how much? How many did we have? We had 5,000 diamonds, so that was kind of cool. But I know I can go up to another tier if I get the 10,000 followers. So I'm trying to get that so that I can at least turn that money into something useful for somebody. All right. So if y'all know anybody, share the Tiki Talk account so that we can get more people in here. So I'm so close. All right. Which of the following structures connects the right atrium to the left atrium in fetal circulatory system because babies are a whole nother gamut of things so be careful when you're doing these kind of questions 
Like babies have like over 300 bones. And by the time you're an adult, you only have 206 or some craziness. Babies are crazy wild. Cool. So make sure your questions are relating to the one thing. <laughs> I don't have a tick. I do. Do I have a TikTok on how to join Discord? Lord, I don't remember. <laughs> Did I? Do I? I think I I think I do. I think I think I think I do. Uh. Yeah. Here we go. How about this one? Don't miss out. Free help. No, nope, that ain't it. That's just saying, join Discord. Let's see. Uh, free. What's this one? My free study room chat group has had to move. We've grown too large for Facebook. It will only hold 250 members. Come find us at Medical Coding by Jen on Discord. Probably no My help at all, huh? Yeah, nothing about where to find the link, how to get there, that you need to create your own account. Yeah, I guess I need to do that, like step by step on how to do this, what you're going to download, all that kind of stuff. I had this. My free Discord this? now has study practice chat rooms based off your certification. So you can go to CCS or CS the chat or the comments had the link involved but you had to copy paste it into a url and stuff but yeah i guess i need to go in there and do a different one don't i good I, good advice betty as always she is awesome okay our options for our answer are this Woo. Process of elimination gets you to A and B, right? Sort of, because those two are the same. And then one of them's atrial or venous. Hmm. Or it could be totally useless in this situation and be something totally different. <laughs> so, no idea. We're talking about right and left atrium. So it's probably not venous and atrial, right? If it's a combo between those things, you know, it's just not, I don't think it would be one or the other. So it's probably, yeah, you've got to be here. And would it be a pulmonary valve? The following structure connects. Connects, connects. Hmm. Valves don't connect. They help with flow, you know. So maybe MK is right. Yeah, valves come with adults. Your babies are supposed to have some because we, we do a lot of valve surgeries on the newborns because they don't come with enough of what their beginning is supposed to be like. But... Yeah, not a connector. What do we think? Everybody's guessing. I see guessing C, guessing C, total guess B. Yeah, I'm just taking it because it's atrial and atrium. It's not, I don't know. Let's see. She is right. She is right. MK was correct. This is. Ah, it does have to do something with the lungs. They were trying to trick you with that pulmonary stuff. So if you knew anything about it, you knew it has something to do with the lungs. So that might hinder you. It contacts the umbilical vein to the inferior vena cava. Nice. It's a con uh, from your belly button all the way up to that main artery that runs through your body that goes all the way up through your heart and you can do those heart casts. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, superior vena cava. 
Yep, 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 yep. Aortic. Yep, 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 yep. So all the way from the, from the belly button all the way up to one of those branches. I'm live. Unless the house is burning and there's an <laughs> I am not your bra. I just got the bra. I am not your bra. Let's see. 100% sure. Let's see. Look at sad. Good job. Had a taft. Fistula. Bra. Do you hurt? You hurt him? I mean, like really. <laughs> oh, yeah. CCS is not as well. Um, accepted and it's a harder exam i think plus it integrates billing involved in it too so crazy crazy i understand your where you're coming from um, the cpc exam is an easier exam but it is widely more accepted more so than any other exam in the united states for employers they really love the cpc uh can't tell you why. Yep, CCS is way more difficult, includes billing and um, matching. Instead of multiple choice, you match your cases up. So I want to take it one of these days just because, you know, I'm sitting here mentoring you guys and trying to help you pass it, even though I don't know a whole lot about the exam, but I should sign up and take it. But um, I would love for them to do the exam online because I'm in a remote place in Arizona and I already have to travel like five hours one way to do an in-person exam through AAPC. I can't imagine how far a CCS game or, you know, exam would be, but I'd love to take it just to audit the dang thing. Are we up? We up? We up? Cardiac is super hard, guys, but don't worry. You only have five anatomy questions throughout the entire, entire CPT book. So it's not going to be back to back to back all cardiology. And to be honest, most of the anatomy questions on my exam were all about the wee wee and the 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 JJ. They were all about the female and male reproductive organs. It was just, an, I'm like, really, you really gonna just ask me about those two body parts and nothing else? Why are you hyper focused on those two things? I don't know, but yeah, they love anatomy questions about the male and female body parts way more than they do the heart. The one that I had on my heart was what direction was the blood coming in from the right pulmonary artery? What direction is the blood flowing in the right pulmonary artery? No, no. <sighs> It was either that one or it was the direction of the blood flow from the superior vena cava. It was going right out to the lung, like right direction, the right, R-I-G-H-T. One of those two. But they asked me more about blood directions in the chambers or arteries of the heart. Is it going the right or to the left? That's what it was asking. Yeah, CCS is hard. If it's easy, give me more. <laughs> they ask where oxygenated blood comes from. 
deoxygenated blood comes from. Well, pulmonary, right? We're gonna we're gonna fill up some blood flows from the arteries and the veins. We're gonna have, you know, your kidneys and all that stuff. They're taking what they need and eliminating the rest and sending it back to go get reoxygenated and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, blood directions. And you know, in your ICD-10, <clears throat> they have it in this page, you know, some directions drawn in, but they don't tell you, is it right, left, what direction are you going into? You got to fill that out. But I think it's the ICD-10, Anatomy of the Heart, and I forgot it was there during my CPC exam because I stayed in the um, CPT book so long that I forgot it was in here. If you go to your ICD-10, it's all here, your directions um, of the heart flow and where it's going out to and the way it's coming into. There's another one. Oh, maybe. There's another one. Where's my other book? Oh, maybe a prior year. Oh, maybe I just drew it in. I don't know. But this is my 2020 book of my ICD-10. I just continue to draw on them, even though I wasn't sharing any of these with anybody. But that right there, superior vena cava to right lung was one of their questions versus the right pulmonary vein. It's from the right lung. The other one is to the right lung. That right there, I need to move to my CPT book. But I've got so much other stuff on that darn heart. <laughs> so much other stuff. It'd be nice if I could just cut this picture out right there and then paste it somewhere. Because that's a cool one. That's what they were asking about. I came... Um, back from the exam and rewrote out things afterwards from even the 2018 when I took the exam just so that I would have it later on. Just being an auditor, I like to re-examine it. I like to visually see things. Even though I make pictures in my head, I like to make pictures that I can see with my eyes, too. Fifteen minutes over. Okay, guys. So I've got more cardiac questions we can do on Wednesday. More E&M, of course. What else would y'all like to see on Wednesday's live? And I got another person to draw free notes for. So that'll be exciting because we've done some sales on um, what has been on the exam the last 45 days. And oh my gosh, I got an update for that. And I've got to add one more section to it and then I'm done right there. See, my update is for 5-1. I'm going to change the date to 5-2, but I've got one more big section to add to it. And what I did was I took off. November's October, November, and December's data. I just took it off and then I started it over with just the data from January 2022 to now. So it's going to be completely different. Instead of the 36 pages it was before, right now I think I'm at 17 pages, but it's just the information from 2022 exams and everybody that's already. Purchase this, we'll get a new update, and I've got a lot of April's information because people just took their exams.
So that will be coming out really soon. <laughs> There's a lot of information in the heart part of the 2022 um, ICD-10. I really like getting it all moved to the CPT book because you forget that you even brought that ICD-10 book because you're looking for only five questions in that book for the entire exam, if you even go there. If you know your guidelines, you probably don't even have to open the book. Like Z9, Z51 is always the first code. Cancer comes after it. Uh, burns are always sequenced. The deepest burn first. Um, adverse effects always has a five at the sixth digit. If you know some of these things, you don't even have to open up that book. So... Yeah, I forget it's there. And I did. I totally wrote up my ICD-10 book with so much anatomy information. I completely forgot it was there. Did not even look at it. Highest to lowest. Yep, you do your third percent. Yes, that 70% off coupon is if you've already purchased your 2021 notes and you just want to upgrade to the 2022 notes, I have a 70% off coupon. I'll go through and create one just for you. And on the sections that you already purchased, it will take 70% off those so that you can upgrade to the 2022 version. But if you've never bought any sections at all before, I have a 30% off coupon if you buy two or more sections. <laughs> yeah, the updates are insanely different. Insanely different. It's, it's crazy how different they are. So totally up to y'all. Anyway, I'm going to get off here. Y'all let me know what y'all want to see on Wednesday's Live, and I'll do my best. I have two tutoring tomorrow. Who am I tutoring? Who is it? In the morning. Who am I doing? And do I have your info of what we're going to be doing? Because I need to prep for your tutoring session in the morning. Liza and just Liza. I'm only doing one. I had to just Liza I'm doing her tomorrow morning I think I've done her once before she was going to do her exam in March and I'm hoping she's doing better yes she may reschedule we'll see yes I do have her previous exam attempts yep so, Lisa, if you are on, I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you in the morning. You are welcome, Betty. Thank you. Thank you, Twinkle. I really appreciate y'all's help. It's 70% off, yes, if you've already purchased like 2021 versions of my notes, but you want to upgrade them to 2022, I'll get you a 70% off coupon, but I just have to make it. So ask me on, on um, Etsy. Message me there because that'll link your account and your previous purchases to the message, and then I can go in and create your coupon for you. Hey, girl. All right, guys. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. I'll be on Discord. If y'all need me, shout out. Yeah, when you do an upgrade, you only have to pay for just the upgraded part of it. You've already done the major part is by the original section. So, but if you're going to buy Two or more, I think it works on. You can save 30%. Yeah. Say hi, Travis. I will. I will. Get him to stop calling me bruh. <laughs> I am mommy. I am not your bruh. Nuh-uh. All right, guys. 
I appreciate y'all. I'll see you on Discord. I'm going to get this thing updated. I got one more thing to post on there. Um, another big section. But um, I'll be sending everybody out their emails. If you've previously purchased this, it will be emailed out soon. <laughs> Gotta say hi to my mom too. Yep, she was in here. I'm going to go see if she's still in there. All right, guys. I'll see y'all on Wednesday night. Good night.